Welcome to Gerard McClendon Live. You know, high school, college, and the workaday world puts us in contact with hundreds of people each day. Acquaintances can turn to friendships, friendships can turn into relationships, but when relationships involve extreme attraction, what is a person to do. You know what? We've got phone lines open right now for this topic. 630-575-TALK. Joining us now from CLTV Studio C, relationship expert and author of A Dummy's Guide to Sexual Abstinence, Darren Washington. Darren, welcome to Gerard McClendon Live. What's up, Gerard? Oh, I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. Man, we're glad that you came on out. First of all, Darren, before we get into the book, is it possible, man, to be abstinent? Yes, it is, Gerard. I've been abstinent for over 15 years. I just stopped counting after year 10. But let me make this very clear to the listening audience. Um, God gives us free will and choice. My goal is not to beat anybody down about living a lifestyle of abstinence. My goal is to be able to provide accurate information that abstinence can work. Mm. Now, when you get the information, it's up to you to make the choice and live the life that you feel is best for you. And as a Christian man, I believe that abstinence work. I'm a living um, example that it works. And I believe that men and especially men need to step up to the plate yeah. in promoting abstinence education. You know, I think we started off on the right track here because so many people think they try to pit the two against each other, sex education versus abstinence, you know. And so would you pit those against each other or, or, or can they cooperate? Well, I don't know if they can cooperate because it, it's kind of, um, it's, it's a defeating purpose, but I mm. will never bash anyone. Um, my goal, again, is to express the benefits of sexual abstinence before marriage. Mm. And if a person wants to teach safe sex, that's fine. But my goal is also spread the message of abstinence so that person that's receiving the message can look at safe sex, they can look at abstinence, look at the pros and cons of both, and then make an educated guess. Because again, remember, mm. we have free will and we have choices that we got to make. But when we make a choice, we cannot manipulate the consequences of the choices that we make. And there are some very deep psychological, mm. emotional, mm. spiritual decisions when you have sex before marriage. You know what? We want to talk about some of the psychological aspects here shortly. I talked with Lakita Garthright earlier today. I That's saw my her, girl. Love yeah, her. Yes. I saw her on the show Perspectives, uh, Monique Carradine's show a few weeks ago. Lakita Garthright, you talk about someone who is an example. Here's a woman who remained... Uh, uh, abstinent, you know, her whole life, waited till she was 30 years old and married to have sex. And, you know, she, along with yourself, it's amazing, you know, and, and so it's great to have a man on the show because it seems like the abstinence movement is always aimed at females. Why is it so important to teach this to men and, and to boys? And, and it's very important, Gerard. And there are a lot of men out there who are abstaining, sometimes because of peer pressure, because of the perception mm -hmm. that men don't come out and do it. And what I want to say to the women, I want to give them a 100% shout out for doing a great job in teaching it. But we got to understand that God created us as male and as female and when it comes to sex, men and women are different. Let's look at the three needs of women. First need is love. Second one is affection. The third one is conversation. Totally different for men. Mm. Men, the first thing is respect. The second thing is recreational companionship. <laughs> the third thing is sex. Wow. So a lot of times when women are talking to males about abstaining, the male doesn't understand because his psyche and makeup is different than the woman and the needs are different. That's why they need to see men out there saying, a man does not need to get a woman pregnant or have sex with multiple women to make him a man. And I applaud the women for going out there and talking about it because why? The women are the recipients of the psychological, emotional, and spiritual damage mm. outside of sex. Now, men are saying, okay, yeah, I want to have sex. That's it. Women are the receivers. Mm. So they are receiving the emotional, the psychological, the, the spiritual um, implications of, in that sexual relationship. And I just want to commend women like Lakita Garth, who has been on the forefront for years in teaching this message. But Gerard, it is time for the men to step up and wake up and teach this message. And, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you, the <laughs> bottom line, Gerard, young people are pure. Mm. The problem is that are, there are single adults who don't want to abstain 
or who say it's impossible because they have not curbed their sexual appetites mm. to abstain because young people learn from us. When we sit there and we say it's ridiculous that our abortion rate is high, it's ridiculous yeah. that the sexually transmitted disease rate is high. Why is it high? They're learning from us as adults. So wow. it's time for us to step up and teach young people the way in which they should go. Single people take responsibility. You know, Darren, the chat room is on fire and so is Facebook. I'm going to Stephanie here. She says, this is so true, Charlotte. Everybody is acting irresponsible. I'm looking at Saya Mala here. She says, but let's start with making sure that all the unmarried people who do who do have sex are at least doing it safely. It looks like there's a safe sex promotion going on in the chat room right now. Jenga says, most definitely it can wait if both are in that mindset to wait and if they truly are in love and love each other, why not wait? I think the last person there, Jenga, agrees with you, Darren. But you know, let's be honest, and both of them, I could understand both perspectives, but let's look at this dating issue because mm. before you could talk about abstinence, you got to talk about dating. Mm. Fact number one, you are not ready to date until you don't need to date. Oh, wait a minute, man. You know what? Hold on to that thought, man, because I want to talk about chaperones a little bit later after the break as well, but if I get you started <laughs> right now, I'm not going to be able to get the break. Darren, please hold on tight, man. We're going to get to you in a moment, man. You know what? The art of saying no. Darren Washington joins me tonight as we discuss his book, A Dummy's Guide to Sexual Abstinence. Is is it possible to save yourself for later? Should you? in the chat room and in the blogs they're saying that abstinence education is failing but hey welcome back to Gerard Clinton Live Darren Washington joins me for a discussion on saving your emotions and yourself give us a call 630-575-TALK Darren hold tight man because if I don't get these callers in people are going to be mad at me let me go to Sylvia first Sylvia thanks for calling GML what's your comment uh yes Hello, this is Sylvia. Yes, what's your comment? Okay, no, my comment is that I'm a 52-year-old, just newly married in, de um, in December. I was abstinent for five years. My fiancé and I are 47 um, after my divorce. And on our first date, I told him I'm not having sex. I made a commitment to God that I was yes. not going to have sex. <laughs> he never been in a relationship like that before, but I told him up front. We decided to go ahead. We dated for five years, and we just got married this December. I taught my kids all of my life no sex don't have sex until you're married so i felt that i had to be a good example yeah. to them my son is 30 years old now my daughter's 24 and they have been abstinent yeah. but i also teach eighth grade sunday school and i tell my kids my same story they were there throughout the wedding plans they knew everything that was going on and i always told them but we're not having sex we're not yeah. having sex wow. i just believe yes, yes, yes. Like, yes. The, uh, like darren said about oral sex that's still sex education, yeah. and we do need to give them that information because they don't think that's sex. Right, so I'm going right. to advocate abstinence. I still think we should still give them some kind of sex information because okay. they don't know that that's sex. Okay. Hey, Sylvia, thanks for the call. I appreciate Thank you. you. You know, that's a great point. And, you know, Darren, talk to me, man. I think he was a, a Los Angeles Laker. Was it A.C. Green? Yep. A.C. Green did get married. to. He was a virgin until he was 40. Yeah. But let me get to that comment. <laughs> and, and, first of all, God bless you and your marriage. And I want to get to parents real quickly mm -hmm. because that, this is so prevalent that this woman set, a, set an example to her children. Mm -hmm. But what I want to express to parents out there, even if you slipped up before you got married, or even if you slipped up in the past, do not be afraid to say, listen, I made a mistake, I did this, but the best option right now for you is to wait until you get married. Yeah. And see, a lot of parents don't speak on it, and they'll let the school system or the church talk to their children about it. Parents, you need to talk to your children about it. Wow. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm I'm just forgiven. Let me go to Shakira. Shakira, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. What's your comment? Yes, hi, Gerard. Hi. Um, I would like to say that uh, Darren truly spoke to my mind, not only my mind, but my heart. Um, I've been in a relationship for almost four years, and I feel like um, my significant other is more in lust than he is in love. Mm. Um, and it's really hurtful to me, and I'm, I'm, I've been trying to pull back from it, but it seems like every time I do, he 
you know, accuses me of cheating, so I have yeah. more questions than a comment. You know what, Shakira, we're going to try to get an answer for you right now. Darren, that's deep, man. No, I got when, an you're, when, you're, when you're in a relationship and it seems like one person loves the other person, but the other person is lusting after the person. Talk to me, Darren. The bottom line is she's been in a relationship Thanks, for four years. Um, she's been trying to hold on to this. There are some total soul ties there, and I know it's difficult, but she has to cut this young gentleman loose. If he can't respect her, her body, and her beliefs, it's not going to change on other issues if they get married. So hey, sometimes hey. it's best to cut it loose yeah. before it gets too deep. Hey, Darren, before I take the next phone call, explain quickly, man, what's a soul tie? Some a soul tie is when you are emotionally and spiritually tied to someone by having sex with them because God created sex for the marriage covenant. Mm -hmm. And spirit man is inside our temples, which is male and female. And when you allow someone else to have sex with you, you actually exchange souls, exchange spirits, and emotional ties with that person, and they become a part of you, and that's why it's so hard for that young lady that just called mm. to let go because it's been going on for four years. Yeah. Let her loose, lady. Let him go. And you know what? Les Brown taught me this. Sometimes you have to give up what's good to go for what's great. Dry. You know God what? God would never take you. God would never take you away from something if He didn't have better for something for you to go to. Yes, sir. Let me get to Debbie right quick. Debbie, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon live. Debbie, talk to me. What's your comment? Oh, hi, Gerard. Hello, hi, Darren. Hey. Hey. This is a great show. Thank, Thank you. you. This is a great topic. Mm. And I just want to tell you, Darren, you're doing, I, I wish, you know what, there's a lot of men out there like you, but guys, come on, there needs to be more, okay? Thank you. And, um, you know, myself, you know, I, I went through this, mm. and, um, you know, you're right about that. You know, your body is the temple of God, mm. okay? For the women out there, honest, uh, you know, I've gone through this. I went the wrong way the first time. I did it wrong. Wow. I didn't listen. I didn't know any better. I wasn't taught. I yeah. mean, you know, your parents kind of skim over it. It's an embarrassing subject sometimes to get into. Yeah. A lot of parents, eh, they don't want to talk about it. But um, I'll tell you what. I, uh, you know, uh, I, I, learned, I learned God's way. Uh, my yeah. husband, you know, I, I went through a, a marriage and a divorce when I was in my early 20s. Mm. And... Um, you know, I met my husband in church, my current husband. I, I got remarried. I didn't think I was ever going to meet anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, we it, were, you it, know, I had a daughter from my previous marriage, and uh, my husband my my husband and I got to grow together. Yes, that's and, right. And um, he got to know my daughter. Absolutely. It's about Seven patience. Years. Debbie, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. Darren, man, ah, I got to go to break again, man. I need an hour with you, my brother. You know what? Hold on tight, Darren. You know, the controversy continues with Darren Washington, a dummy's guide to sexual abstinence. Call us, 630-575-TALK. Gerard McClendon Live, back in two minutes. One more phone call, Darren, then we're going to close out. Let me go to Donna. Donna, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment? I'd like to know how you do you be in a relationship with someone and not have sex with them, knowing that you're the one that don't want to have sex with them. You meet a guy, mm -hmm. and how do you approach him and tell him well, that's not what you're in? Wow. Hey, Donna, but thanks for the thanks for the call, Donna. I got to go. The show's almost over. Talk to me, Darren. That's a great question. It's an excellent question. And, Donna, what you do is that you need to be absolutely upfront during the dating process while you're getting to know a person and let that person know upfront. listen, I don't believe in having sex before marriage. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care how much money he has. I don't care what kind of dri car he drives. If he doesn't respect the fact that you want to keep your body pure, cut him loose and let him go. Mm, Darren, he's the author of A Dummy's Guide to Sexual Abstinence. Also, you've got a radio and TV show, 88.7. It's called Singles in the City. And you have a television show, Singles in the City, in Gary, Indiana. Yes. Darren, close us out here, man. You know, uh, 
Is it possible? What do you do, man? Do you lift weights, man? Do you do you fly model airplanes? You got 10 seconds, Darren. What does one do, man, if you're not having sex? Hey, you keep you 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 make time work for you. There are a lot of things that you could be doing besides focusing on sex. But Gerard, the last thing I want to say is make I want to quick, make it I wanna, quick. I want to give out our churches need to make sure they start teaching sexual abstinence in churches because there are people that are struggling in the church, and we got to come out strong and promote and help our single people in church, and the church must show yeah. compassion. Yeah, hey, that's the final word for final today. Word. Darren Washington, a dummy's guide to sexual abstinence. Having responsibility for ourselves and others is hallmark. Realize that people can be resilient yet fragile, so take special care when dating, courting, flirting, and searching for your next relationship. Hey, stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged. Safe sex versus abstinence. Can you hold out until you're married? Some people say, I've tried the abstinence thing for a few months. I quit because it just isn't natural. Unfortunately, love-struck women seldom receive long-term commitment from deceptive men seeking short-term pleasure. What are the consequences or the benefits? And why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? The author of A Dummy's Guide to Sexual Abstinence, Darren Washington, next on Gerard McClendon Live.